In this video, we're going to the changes made to mount equipment throughout the history of World of Warcraft. We'll start off in vanilla and classic WoW, with a trinket named Carrot on a Stick. When worn, this trinket increases the mount speed of a player by 3%. To obtain the item, you need to pick up the quest from Whistle Brass Bolts located in the Zone of Thousand Needles. The name of this quest is called Gazrilla, and to complete it, it requires a player to go to the Dungeon of Zulfurak and kill the Hydra Demigod boss. This was a level 50 quest, and unfortunately not as simple as it sounds. To summon Gazrilla, players need to bang on a gong with the Mallet of Zulfurak. To create the mallet, it required doing several steps in the hinterlands before the player could finally enter the dungeon and bang the gong. First, players must kill Keong the Keeper and Mortigia the Keeper at the Altar of Zol in hinterlands, which drops a sacred mallet. Next, players must go to Chintha Alor and head to the top of the city past many mobs before clicking on the altar to transform the sacred mallet into the mallet of Zulfarak. Then, players have to head across the world, enter Zulfarak, kill Gazrilla, and loot Gazrilla's electrified scale. After completing this dungeon quest and returning to Whistle Brass Bolts with proof of the monster's demise, players could at last turn in the quest to obtain the Carrot on a Stick's Trinket. This quest was later changed in Wrath and Cataclysm. The requirement of having to have the mallet to ring the gong was removed in Wrath. The quest itself was also completely removed from the game of Kata when the Zone of Thousand Needles was tsunami flooded by a certain angry edgy black dragon. The next item to benefit mounts in Classic WoW comes from the Enchanting Profession. This enchant, simply named Riding Skill, can only be applied to armor items in the hand slot. When applied and worn, this permanent enchant increases mount speed by 2%. However, the formula to learn this enchant is a very rare world drop. It also has about a 1% drop rate from Nefarian as well. To craft the enchant, it requires an enchanting skill of 250, and its ingredients are two large brilliant shards and three rich illusion dust. The final item from Classic that increases mount to speed came from another profession item, this time blacksmithing. Mithril Spurs were a blacksmithing only augment in Classic and could be applied to the feed armor slot to increase mount and movement speed by 4%. The plans for Mithril Spurs are a very low world drop chance and can be looted from Magister Calandris in the Diremold Dungeon. To craft Mithril Spurs, it requires a blacksmithing skill of 235 and requires 4 Mithril Bars and 3 solid grinding stones. The Mithril Spurs themselves were not soulbound, so they could be traded or sold, but they still required a blacksmith to add them to the foot armor slot all the way until the end of the Burning Crusade. The cool thing about all these mount improvement items in Classic was that their effects could be stacked. So as long as the player was a blacksmith in Classic, they could have a plus 9% movement speed increase to their mounts. That's 3% from the carrot on a stick, 2% from the glove enchant, and 4% from the boot augment, for a total of a 9% upgrade. Now we move on to WoW's first expansion, the Burning Crusade. TBC saw two trinkets that added a mount speed of 10%. Unfortunately, none of these trinkets stacked with any of the items from Classic, which also increased mount movement speed. The first trinket is called the Riding Crop. This trinket was crafted with a leatherworking, which required a skill of 350. The pattern for the Riding Crop is sold by Thomas Yance in the Old Hills Brad Foothills in the escape from Dernhold Dungeon, which is accessible by the Caverns of Time. As an interesting side note, during the TBC beta, this trinket actually increased mount speed by 25%, but Blizzard probably thought that was too OP and reduced it. The second trinket, called the Skybreaker Whip, can be obtained from the Netherwing Orcs off the south of Shadowmoon Valley. To get this trinket, players have to complete a series of daily quests until they're honored with the Netherwing. Then the player has to complete the Dragon Maw race, Captain Skyshatter. The Skybreaker Whip flavor text reads, Property of the Top Orc, a reference to the movie Top Gun. And of course, because Blizzard hates fun like this, these two trinkets do not stack with each other, or spells like the Paladin's Crusader Aura. Both of these trinkets when equipped are just barely above the speed increase from all the mount improvement items in vanilla. When combined, all the items from Classic give a 9% increased speed, and one of these trinkets gives a 10% increased speed. So these trinkets are better, but only 1% better than their Classic mount improvement counterparts. Now we move on to the Wrath of the Lich King. While there were no mount improvement items added in the expansion, there are two things of note. First, at the very beginning of Wrath, Blizzard nerfed the trinkets from TBC so they no longer worked up players above level 70. The other interesting fact is that in the Wrath beta, there actually was another riding crop that could be crafted. However, this riding crop was more like an enchant or an augment because it applied a 10% mount speed buff to a mount when it was in the player's inventory. However, it was also consumed in the process. With mount collecting becoming increasingly popular, Blizzard might have decided to just abandon the idea, because it would be so expensive and time consuming to have to enchant every single mount a player wanted to use. The next mount improvement item comes from the Warlords of Draenor expansion. The Swift Riding Crop was a consumable item that granted the player the ability to instantly mount an Ashran for one hour. To buy this item, Alliance players need to be honored with the Worm's Vanguard, and Horde players need to be honored with Vulgent Spear. The item costs 5 gold and can be bought from Thomas Ryogen, the Stormship Quartermaster, and for Horde players, Dazarian, the War Spear Quartermaster. These items are in the epic BG version of Ashran at NBFA, so be sure to buy them if you can before the match starts. Unfortunately, this effect does not persist through death. As a fun side note, whether by accident or not, when WAD first launched, Alliance players had to pay 50 gold for the Swift Riding Crop, while Horde players only had to pay 5 gold. While the price was made equal later, it does make you wonder if this could have been a cheeky reference to the Alliance favoritism meme. 
Next we move on to the Legion expansion, which really started adding mount equipment to the game. The first item worth discussing can be found in the Sanctum of the Light, which is a Paladin Order Hall located underneath the Lighthouse Chapel in the Eastern Plaguelands. When Paladins collected this item, it gave them a 10% increased mount speed on the Broken Isles. The next four mount equipment items all come from various professions from the Legion expansion. Each of these items provides a fun and unique effect to a player's mount. The items are luckily not soul bound, so they can be sold and traded to other players. The first of these two items comes from blacksmithing. After completing a short quest, blacksmiths learn how to craft laystone hoof plates with 25 laystone ore. When used, they increase the player's mount speed on the Broken Isles by 20% for two hours. However, they are an extra great for blacksmiths because the duration of the buff is quadrupled to an eight hour long buff. The second item blacksmiths can craft is called the Demon Steel Stirrups. Presumably a reference to the Mithril Spurs of Vanilla, these stirrups don't increase movement speed, but instead allow the player to interact with objects while mounted. However, they only work in the Broken Isles. Just like the Laystone Hoof Plates, Demon Steel Stirrups are learned by blacksmiths through a short quest and their two hour buff is extended to eight hours for blacksmiths. Demon Steel Stirrups are particularly useful for gathering crafted reagents such as ores and herbs in the Broken Isles since the player no longer has to dismount to interact with those objects. Of course, there are several limitations to these fun mount equipment items. Unfortunately, only one of these mount equipment items can be equipped at a time, and these items only work in the Broken Isles, meaning they do not work on Argus either. The next mount equipment item for Legion comes from the leatherworking profession. The stone high leather barding prevents players from being dazed while mounted. Like other mount equipment in Legion, these items only last for two hours and only work on the Broken Isles. The effect is also extended for eight hours for players with leatherworking and is learned from a quest. However, the stone hide leather barding is pretty expensive to craft as they only require 50 stone hide leather. The last mount equipment item from the Broken Isles is the Blood Totem Saddle Blanket, made from the tailing profession. What interesting effect might this item have, you're probably wondering? Turns out, not that interesting. This item just lets you keep a rested experience buff no matter where you log off, as long as you're on the mount with the buff. As such, it's pretty much useless at max level. Its use description says, place a saddle blanket on your mount, making your mount much more comfortable for two hours. The effect's duration is quadrupled for tailors. Battle for Azeroth saw the second iteration of this mount equipment added in Legion. Essentially, everything was just copied from Legion into BFA professions, with the names and ingredients changing. All the same effects and the professions that made the mount equipment stayed the same, with there being three main changes. First, the BFA mount equipment obviously only works in BFA zones. Second, they use BFA mats, and third, they're learned from trainers and not from quests. A note before we move on, Battle for Azeroth is the only expansion where profession names are different for each faction. For Alliance players, BFA professions start with Kul Turan, and for Horde, they start with Zandalari. Instead of having to say Kul Turan and Zandalari professions, we're just going to simplify it down to BFA professions. Just like in Legion, there are two mount equipment items for blacksmithing. The first one, called Monal Hardened Hoof Plates, is essentially the same thing as the Laystone Hoof Plates from Legion. Like their Laystone Hoof Plate counterparts from Legion, Monal Hardened Hoof Plates increase the player's mount speed by 20% for 2 hours, or 8 hours if you're a blacksmith. The second item from BFA Blacksmithing are the Mono Hardened Stirrups, which are the BFA versions of the Demon Steel Stirrups from Legion. They provide the same ability to interact with objects while mounted and are only limited to Kul Taras and Zandalar. In BFA Leatherworking, Leatherworkers can craft the Coarse Leather Barding. This item is equivalent to the Stone High Leather Barding from Legion and prevents the player from being dazed while mounted. And finally, with BFA Tailoring, players could make the Sea Breeze Saddle Blanket, which is equivalent to the Blood Totem Saddle Blanket from Legion. Now we come to the biggest change in WoW regarding mount equipment. In patch 8.2, a new mount equipment slot was added to the mount journal. Five new items are introduced that could be placed in the slot, with four of them being similar abilities from both the Legion and BFA profession items. The first craftable, slottable mount equipment item added in 8.2 that we'll discuss is the Comfortable Rider's Barding. This item can be learned from the BFA Leatherworking Profession Trainer. Similar to the first two iterations of the Stone High Leather Barding in Legion and the Coarse Leather Barding in BFA, the Comfortable Rider's Barding, when equipped, prevents the players from being dazed while mounted. Now, there are two interesting things about crafting this item. First, in BFA crafting, it requires both the coarse leather bard from leatherworking and the saddle breeze saddle blanket from tailoring. Both of these items must then be combined by the leatherworker in order to make the comfortable rider's barding. The other interesting crafting fact is that this recipe also reappears in Shadowlands leatherworking. So far, this is the only piece of mount equipment in the game that can be crafted from two different expansion professions. Crafting the Comfortable Riders Barding is considerably easier with Shadowlands on the working, as it only requires two callous hides, five lightless silk, and five penumbra thread. Perhaps Blizzard thought that having to make the Comfortable Riders Barding from BFA with two different professions and from two different mat intensive items was too expensive or too much work for the average player. The next piece of slotable mount equipment is crafted using BFA enchanting. The Lightsteep Hoof Plates have the same function as the Laystone Hoof Plates and the Monothel Hardened Hoof Plates, but instead of being crafted with blacksmithing, they're crafted by enchanting. However, enchanters do still need to get the Monothel Hard Hoof Plates to be used as an ingredient in the recipe. 
To craft the light sepu plates which increase the player's ground mount speed by 20%, an enchanter will need 2 umber shards, 30 gloom dust, and 1 monolith hardened hoof plate. The next slottable mount equipment item is called the Saddle Chute, and is made with BFA tailoring. The Saddle Chute gives a mount a unique augment that has not been seen before in the game. When equipped and the player is dismounted high in the air, the player will slowly fall down on a parachute, instead of immediately plummeting to their death. The player must be falling for at least 3 seconds before the parachute deploys. However, the item can be buggy and is very expensive to make, costing 10 embroidered deep sea satin, 50 gilded sea weave, 15 dreaded leather, and 20 nylon thread. The Saddle Chute is so far the only new mount equipment effect that is not some iteration of a previously crafted mount buff item. Now we come to the biggest reason why the mount equipment slot was added. Prior to BFA, there were two Water Strider mounts added to the game. These mounts were wholly unique because they were the only mounts in the game that allowed the player to walk on water while mounted. The first Water Strider is the Azure Water Strider, it can be purchased from Nat Pago in the Crossering Vials for 4000 gold. However, you must be exalted with the anglers to purchase it. The next Water Strider is the Crimson Water Strider, it can be purchased from Nat Pago for 100 Nat's Lucky's Coins in the Garrison from the World of Draenor expansion. However, this mount was far more time consuming and RNG dependent than a simple rep grind, so the Azura Water Strider was much easier to obtain for players. As you can imagine, a mount that can walk on water was very handy. It became so handy that almost everyone used it all the time. Over time, most people acquired a Water Strider mount and in some cases it almost became mandatory in dungeons or battlegrounds. Blizzard saw that most of the mounts being summoned were Water Striders, and this was one of the big reasons they decided to introduce the mount equipment slot. There were not one, but two different mount equipment items that can be equipped that allow the player's mount to walk on water. The first of these is called the Angler's Water Striders. When 8.2 went live, the water walking ability was removed from the water walking mounts, but players who owned a Water Strider prior to patch 8.2 were mailed an item called Angler's Water Striders on every level 100 plus character by Nat Pagel. The Angler's Water Striders can also be purchased from Nat Pagel for 45 gold, and even better, the item is a count wine, so you can send it alts. The only downside to the Angler's Water Striders is that the water walking ability is cancelled when the player gets in combat, whereas this was not the case with the original Water Strider mounts. If players didn't want to use the Angler's Water Strider for whatever reason, there was also a craftable mount equipment item from BFA Blacksmithing called Inflatable Mount Shoes, which also allowed the player to walk on water. So far, these are the only 5 mount equipment items added to the game that can be slotted into the mount equipment slot. However, since 2 of these items are both water walking, there are really only 4 effects that mount equipment can give when equipped. Aquatic mounts, the Sky Golem, and the Mechanized Lumber Extractor are the only mounts where the mount equipment won't take effect. When used, the player will get a warning saying your active mount does not benefit from mount equipment because it already has an ability. And to wrap up this video, here are some suggestions for Blizzard. First, make the mount equipment slot be able to hold all 4 or 5 mount equipment items, and have the player be able to choose which effect is active at a time. Currently, players have to manually switch them out, and this also takes up valuable bag space. Another suggestion is to simply come up with more fun mount equipment abilities. Perhaps an item that auto taunts all mobs in certain radius for the player, for example. Do you have any ideas for fun mount equipment effects? Let us know in the comments below. And well, that does it for this video. Which really was just how mount buffs went from trinkets and augments to buffs from crafted items, and then to their own mount equipment slot. While the mount equipment slot is a nice feature, it almost feels a half finished, and here's to hoping it gets further updates in the future.